yeah good evening students yesterday we discussed about first chapter in 10th class that is about nutrition so i said to you introduction and i said to you one of the activity so that is i am going to explain here with details so that's what you listen carefully you can write down the important points in your notebook whatever the notebook i said to you in that you have to write the bit type questions so let me write the lesson name so before going to know the lesson name already we know that but before going to the lesson name i asked a question yesterday to become fit and healthy to grow what do we need to become fit and healthy to grow if there is any induce to recover the wound what do we need so we need some of the nutrients what do we need some of the nutrients so we need nutrients what is the word nutrients so from where do we get the nutrients so for that i asked you what are nutrients let me write what are nutrients there is a question what are nutrients so nutrients we get from our digestive system whatever the food which we eat that change as simple substances simple molecules are simple elements simple molecules so here simple molecules formation occur by our digestive system which we take in that <coughs> those we call as nutrients yeah so now here so nutrients we get from our digestive system which we eat so simple molecules we call as a nutrients what are nutrients means whatever the substances which are formed by our digestive system which help for us our growth development and when we have the induce to repair the cells those nutrients are essential so give some examples of nutrients so here carbohydrates carbohydrates proteins vitamins minerals fats some of the salts and water these are all salts and water also so some quantity only we require salts not to fats also a little so water also essential for our body and salts so these are all we called as nutrients <coughs> which we got from our digestive system which helps us to become fit and healthy to grow to develop to repair when we have any injuries to recover the wound these help for the cell division and we recover that wound with the cell division to occur cell division these are all useful so what we are going to discuss here actually what are nutrients the substances which are useful for our body to become fit and healthy to occur metabolic activities which is called as which are called as nutrients so here what is nutrition the next question what we are going to discuss what is nutrition before going to write the lesson name what is nutrition you can write so nutrition is our lesson name what is our lesson name nutrition our lesson name is nutrition this is our lesson name 
this is our lesson in nutrition <coughs> here the first question what i am going to ask you what is nutrition so already we discussed it one question that is what are nutrients this is second question actually after uh, announcement of the lesson name I asked this is the first question so that is also one more question so what are nutrients procurement of nutrients is called nutrition so the word here answer procurement procurement C U R E M E N T procurement procurement means intake intake receiving or taking of nutrients is called nutrition so those nutrients formed by our digestive system which we eat eating those nutrients procurement of those nutrients is called nutrition so now here in this chapter we are going to discuss nutrition in plants nutrition in animals so here nutrients required for all the living beings so in our chapter we are going to divide as a two parts nutrition in plants and nutrition in animals so the first part we are going to discuss about nutrition in plants so plants also require some of the nutrients so here plants are classified as a two types autotrophs one is auto tropes the second one is heterotrophs heterotrophs autotrophs and the heterotrophs <clears throat> what are autotrophs and what are heterotrophs autotrophs means which can prepare their own food by using sunlight all green plants they can prepare their own food by the process of photosynthesis so those are called autotrophs the organs which depend on other organs so here the organs which can prepare their own food by using solar energy those are called autotrophs all r means here all green plants are autotrophs so almost all plants which have the green leaves those are called autotrophs so almost all animals which depend on other organisms so almost all animals depend on other organisms so that's what those are called heterotrophs so here the definition we can write the organs which can prepare their own food by using solar energy those are called autotrophs those are called autotrophs so green plants example for autotrophs what are heterotrophs means the organs which cannot prepare their own food they depend on another organs for their food those are called heterotrophs human beings and herbivores are called heterotrophs because we depend on the plants plants green plants are autotrophs they can prepare their own food we depend on them for our food so that's what we are called as heterotrophs so here for the autotrophs also to prepare their own food they require some raw materials so for example in your house your mother is going to prepare rice so to prepare food for you rice water she is going to use to prepare like that to prepare such a food for the plants plants also require some of the raw materials those are chlorophyll water sunlight and carbon dioxide so for autotrophs now i am going to discuss about autotrophs i think you understood this one i am going to discuss about autotrophs so so for the autotrophs it require four raw materials <clears throat> two are internal internal two are external what internal and what external water h2o and chlorophyll in the plant world these are internal factors so these two and sunlight sunlight and carbon dioxide carbon 
dioxide CO2 these two are external so because these are out of the plant body these two are inside the plant body so when these two present means external internal factors present for the autotrophs then only they can prepare their own food so here for the first time photosynthesis equation given by cb van nail so cb van nail in 1931 who gave photosynthesis equation so all green plants they use these four sources and they can prepare their own food by the process of photosynthesis so at that time cb van nail gave the equation co2 plus h2o gives rest ch2o plus h2o plus o2 so this it, it was the first equation which was given by the cb van nail in 1931 so here <coughs> what do you want to write sunlight and chlorophyll already i said to you students you know very well about this at the chlorophyll by using the chlorophyll by using solar energy carbon dioxide combined with water to prepare starch along with that water and oxygen formation occur this is the process which we call as photosynthesis what do we call photo synthesis synthesis so here photosynthesis means photo means light synthesis means making or preparing by using the light preparing the food material so that's what this process is called photosynthesis what do we call this process is called photosynthesis so <coughs> who gave the first equation for the photosynthesis cb van nail in which year 1931 what was the equation here carbon dioxide plus water gives rise to ch2o that is carbohydrate carbohydrate one molecule of carbon dioxide plus one molecule of water gives rise to one molecule of carbohydrate one molecule of water and one molecule of oxygen formation occur so it was a first equation later on it changed as balance equation that we will discuss so if you get the question what was the first equation of photosynthesis means you want to write this one if you get the question write the equation of photosynthesis means the balanced equation you want to write already i informed to you that we will write later so i think here you understood who gave the first equation for the photosynthesis and what are the raw materials required for the photosynthesis what are the raw materials so four raw materials require those four are classified into external and internal so these two are internal and those two are external internal means inside the plant body water and chlorophyll external means carbon dioxide and sunlight so here chlorophyll are two types we are going to discuss how many types of chlorophyll are there there are two types of chlorophyll are there chlorophyll a chlorophyll b so yesterday i said to you let me rub this one so here the structure of chloroplast and where the location of chlorophyll is there that we want to know so here the structure of chloroplast so where do we find more chloroplast generally where we discussed about chloroplast chloroplast are in the plant cell that is especially in the gall cells more the structure of chloroplast disc shape is a shape disc shape we will find the structure of chloroplast here like this we are going to find the structures in the chloroplast yesterday i said to you this is a chloroplast this is chloroplast chloro plast so in ninth we learnt there are three types of chloroplast 
leukoplast, chloroplast, chromoplast. Leuco means white, chloro means green, chromo means remaining all colors. So three types of chloroplasts are there. We are discussing about chloro. Chloro means what they say green. So that's what I use a green marker. So here these are called granum. What do we call granum? These are stalks. Thylakoid. Thylakoid. So granum, granum thylakoid. Upon the granum thylakoid, chlorophyll A and chlorophyll B is there. Here, these are the chlorophylls. What do we call this? Chloro fills. Remember students, on the granum thylakoid, we will find the chlorophylls. So make a question, how many types of chlorophylls are there? How many types of types of chlorophylls are there? How many types of chlorophylls are there? There are two types of chlorophylls. There are two types of chlorophylls. The first one is chlorophyll A. What is that? Chlorophyll A. The second one is chlorophyll B. Chlorophyll A and chlorophyll B. So there are two types of chlorophylls are there. Chlorophyll A, blue green. Chlorophyll B, yellow green. So this is blue and the green. This is yellow and green. These are the two types of chlorophylls we will find on the chloroplasts. Chloroplasts are present in the plant cells. Plant cells are present in the leaves. So yesterday what did I say? Again that only I am giving here the information. But this question we didn't write. You write. Chlorophyll A and chlorophyll B are there and the granum thylakoid. So, what is the function of chlorophyll? So, it traps the sunlight. So, here yesterday I said to you, sunlight, from the sunlight, rainbow colors, verb G R, rainbow colors from, uh, uh, falls on the leaf. So, in that, blue and red color which are in the 400 to 700 nanometers from the ultraviolet rays chlorophyll a and b absorbs other colors also absorbs but in that red and blue more it absorbs by the chlorophylls the units of light known as photons the another question what are the units of light what what are the units of sunlight or light what are the units of light photons photons the units of light are known as photons so from the sunlight photons absorbs by chlorophyll a and b to form the ATP and NADP these are the end products of light reaction so in the photosynthesis two phases are there light reaction and dark reaction so light reaction is the first phase by using the sunlight the chlorophyll combines this water and carbon dioxide and it forms ATP and NADPH up to there that is called the light reaction thereafter without light also the process occurs so that's what that is called the dark reaction two phases are there that we will discuss the next what is light reaction and what is a dark reaction so here how many types of chlorophylls are there chlorophyll a and b a means blue green b means yellow green so these two types are there photons the units of light so now structure of chloroplast granum thylakoid granum the, this is a liquid portion which is called as stroma what do we call stroma this is a liquid portion it is called as stroma so in this the stalks are connected with the stroma granum and stroma connected with the stalk that is called granum thylakoid so here on the granum thylakoid chlorophyll a and chlorophyll b observe so 
what we are going to discuss here next we are going to discuss about uh, four substances required for the photosynthesis what did i say that uh, light carbon dioxide water chlorophyll so now we are going to discuss about uh, how do you prove that light is essential for photosynthesis so the question it is a four marks question i am going to explain you how do you prove that light is essential for photosynthesis how do you write the question how do you how do you prove that light is essential for photosynthesis how do you prove that light is essential for photosynthesis this is four marks question students lab activity also four marks and lab activity question now you don't forget how to start this and where to where we want to write so it is lab activity that's what we want to write aim first aim there is no space for me to write that's what i am going to give only points and i am going to read that you can note down in your notebook aim finding light is essential for photosynthesis finding light is essential for photosynthesis you keep the aim and you write finding light is essential for photosynthesis the next materials materials are aparches materials are aparches we can say that materials potted plant the plant which is in the pot potted plant iodine solution methylated spirit beaker test tube stove lighter petri dish water so these are the materials once again i am going to say potted plant iodine solution methylated spirit petri dish test tube beaker water light if you want to lighter or matches stick whatever it is you can take all this you can write in this next we are going to discuss about procedure the third step is procedure procedure this is the third step here you want to write the brief information along with that so let me draw the picture here we are going to discuss about a plant i am going to draw you i am going to draw a plant for this activity so here these are the leaves okay so upon that leaf so this is a potted plant first we have to choose a potted plant then keep it in the dark room 3 to 4 days so keep in dark room 3 to 4 days so students here i am going to ask you a doubt we selected one of the potted plant and we kept it in the dark room so why do we means why what is the need of keeping this potted plant in the dark room why we have to keep the potted plant in the dark room so that is the question so generally sometimes you will get why do we keep potted plant in the dark room why what is the reason why do we keep that potted plant in the dark room 
so why do we keep means already this is in the sunlight all the leaves preparing starch if you do this activity directly from this like this from this means according to this situation that experiment will fail so that's what we have to keep the potted plant in the dark room three to four days then what will happen here the leaves becomes leaf will fall down fall down means it will not det detach from the plant so it get wrinkles it lost it its freshness that is the intention now you have to get the plant from the dark room after three days if you see that leaves are uh, getting wrinkled and uh, if the leaves are lost their freshness at that time you want to bring outside the plant before going to bring outside the plant you have to take a light screen so here i didn't mention light screen remember it is important thing here now i am giving the word light screen test to beaker methylated spirit iodine solution water matchstick or lighter whatever you are using along with that this is the important thing we have to arrange light screen on the leaf of the plant in this way here you can make a star shape so it is completely dark here won't allow light only at this place you are going to find a light so let me draw that leaf blue color this is the leaf okay now we arranged a light screen on the leaf now we are going to keep the total plant in the sunlight 5 to 6 hours 5 to 6 hours now what happened within the 5 to 6 hours the plant leaves receives the sunlight and the water combined with the carbon dioxide then it forms starch photosynthesis process occur in that leaves so after 5 to 6 hours detach the leaf means cut the leaf you can take this one leaf or along with the another one also you can take so then what we want to do we have to take a test tube is it clear in this what do you want to take methylated okay methylated spirit methylated spirit okay in the test tube we want to take methylated spirit then we have to keep this leaf this leaf and that leaf both leaves we have to keep in this test tube in the methylated spirit then we want to keep this test tube in the beaker okay pour some water inside this now you have to boil this beaker water what you want to do this beaker water you want to boil with the stove or any one of the bison burner or whatever it is so first the water gets heat then it turns to methylated spirit so here is a doubt i already asked you why we have to boil the test tube in the beaker water why won't we boil directly by using the stove or candle or whatever it is we should not boil the test tube along with the methylated spirit because this methylated spirit catches the fire it will burn and it harm to us so the leaf will burn the test tube will burn it may harm to us so that's what we should not boil the test tube or 
we should not use a test tube where the fire is there where you are using the fire so okay this is for our care we are doing why we are boiling actually here why we are boiling means these are the green leaves what are those these are the green leaves green leaves means what does it contain it contains chlorophyll to remove the chlorophyll in this leaves we will boil to remove the chlorophyll we boil so now there is no chlorophyll in that leaves already we kept in the sunlight starch formation occur we are going to find where the starch formation occur for that we have to vacate the chlorophyll for that we boil here now we can take the leaves with the careful pluckers we want to use because up to now we boil so that is hot it may harm us so that's what take care bring out and keep a petri dish means one of the plate okay one of the plate in this pour some water and keep this two leaves what we are doing the two leaves we are keeping and we are giving the water also here so in that water we are going to wash that leaves okay in that water we are going to wash the leaves now remove the leaves eyes outside how many leaves are there two leaves are there now pour iodine iodine so here is iodine bottle i am going to show to you this is like iodine the drops we are applying on this so here on the two leaves we are applying iodine so what happened here this is this leaf and this is so leaf one and leaf two here leaf one it is leaf two for example i gave you numbers to remember this total leaf turns into blue black color so it is an indication starch bond so on that leaves we are applying iodine solution so here this first leaf completely turns into blue black color but in the second leaf what happened you are going to find here turns into blue black color and the remaining portion it turns into blue black color see here so here light falls so the here starch formation occur and here here so the starch formation occur here they didn't form the starch now what is the conclusion there what you are going to get so the whole process what did i do here what did i explain here that you want to write in the procedure then after this the conclusion you want to write so what is the conclusion fourth step is conclusion so lack of space i wrote here and there but should not forget students you know very well the fourth step is a conclusion so here lack of light in this place the light didn't fall on that leaf due to that there is no starch formation so it indicate us if there is no light there is no photosynthesis that is a conclusion if there is a light there is photosynthesis process so here why did we use iodine iodine we used to know whether the starch formed or not in that leaf why did we boil here the leaf to remove the chlorophyll in the leaf so now almost all without light there is no photosynthesis process so that we proved by doing this activity the last one is a precautions fifth step is a precautions what precautions we have to take to do this activity when we are doing something we should take care otherwise that experiment will fail when we are going to arrange this light screen that should be tight from any direction light should not fall on the leaf that is first second thing after completion of keeping in the sunlight when you are boiling take care 
the test tube spirit directly should not boil in the water beaker you have to boil if you boil directly already i said it will catch the fire it it will burn leaf will burn it may harm to you the total experiment will collapse then still is there any precaution while you are doing any activity you should take care yourself so while you are using the burners for boiling at that time also take care yourself so that that is also one more precaution so these are the three precautions we can write the total activity is the four marks question so how do you prove that light is essential means you have to write this four steps this is activity sometimes you will get a one mark or two marks questions which is solution used to find out starch presence in the leaf iodine solution which solution used to remove the chlorophyll methylated spirit why do we keep the potted plant in the dark room to vacate the starch already prepared how many hours do how to keep in the sunlight to prepare the starch 5 to 6 hours what precautions do you take to do the light is essential for photosynthesis activity light screen should be tight from any direction should not fall light on that leaf while we are boiling the leaf in the methylated spirit we have to take care ourselves so like this in the one activity there are different questions are there so that if you know the total activity then anyway whatever the way you you are getting the question you are able to answer one of the question i am going to ask you that is second academic standard i am the solution i can identify whether there is a starch or not who am i i am the solution i can identify whether there is a starch or not who am i iodine solution when we use iodine solution then only we will find whether there is a starch or not in that leaf okay i am the solution with me by boiling we can remove you can remove the chlorophyll who am i methylated spirit what is that methylated spirit i am the instrument i can obstruct the light falling on the leaf who am i light screen light screen okay i am the substance present in plants when iodine apply on me i turns into blue black color who am i starch or carbohydrate or glucose starch or carbohydrate is in solid state glucose in liquid state so this these type of questions you may get from this content i think so you understood all the structure of chloroplast i said so chlorophyll present on the chloroplast means inside the chloroplast whatever the granulocytes are there there chlorophylls are there they trap the sunlight so what are the units of sunlight photons which one absorbs photons chlorophyll what is the meaning of chlorophyll also one question is there the meaning of chlorophyll green leaves which are known as food factory of the plants leaves are food factory of the plants and which are universal food providers green plants are called universal food providers all these questions are there in our textbook then von helmont experiment i said to you so not only from the soil but also from other sources what are other sources means water sunlight carbon dioxide so from the soil water absorbs in that water nutrients are there the, these are not enough for the plant growth and to prepare their own food sunlight and carbon dioxide also essential for the plants in that leaves chlorophyll also is there so when the four substances present in the plants then only they can prepare their own food so that's what those are called autotrophs i think so students it is very clear still is there any doubt you can ask me in the comment section i'm going to prepare some more questions on this so you write all the questions in your notes don't forget you can make your own creative questions then only you are able to learn more and more so this is four marks question in that one mark two mark 
who have my questions sometimes so many questions i am going to prepare you sometimes this picture will give you then you are going to get a question question mark for this what does it indicate what does it indicate means it is light is essential for photosynthesis information if asked what is it means that is a light screen that is a light screen sometimes petri dish you may get the question mark sometimes you may get the beaker water so here also what is happening in this picture sometimes you will get such a question so boiling the leaves in the methylated spirit like that in this picture information is there when you see that picture what is happening here you have to recognize then only you are able to answer all the questions so that's what all the pictures you have to draw in the processor itself so aim materials processor conclusion or result or observation the last one is precaution so you have to write precautions so then the total four marks question completed we will discuss with the another question in the next session bye